Did any of you watch the movie Frozen? You watched it? I didn't watch You watched it? You, all right. You know, I figured this would be a good week to watch it. You know, this past week looked and felt like it was a frozen kingdom out there. And it started out with sub-zero temperatures and plummeted there to about 17 below. When we had our, um, our Mission Impossible night, we had 38 show up. Wow, we all survived. And, and some said it was fun. <laughs> no, survival in the cold was half the fun. You know, in this frozen kingdom, ice, snow, and cold rain. Okay? And there isn't much you can do about it. You can, you can try to open your doors to heat up the outside, build a fire, and, 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 and all that. But you still go outside, and you're still going to freeze. It's cold out there. The frozen kingdom is very powerful this time of year. Thankfully, the frozen kingdom is temporary. You know, as the days get longer, which they are now, the winter kingdom is going to just melt away someday. Right? The, this world is experiencing a temporary kingdom. It's a kingdom where sin reigns. Sickness, sorrow, pain, decay, and death are normal experiences in this earthly realm. This kingdom of death will pass. There will be a permanent kingdom established one day. It will be God's kingdom. You know, when, when you think of kingdom, what runs through your mind? You know, in Frozen's kingdom, ice and snow prevailed. You can go to the magic kingdom in Florida and, <laughs> okay, magic prevailed. Well, at least there won't be this prevailing cold there. You know, Kurt and Carrie, they, they left the comforts of, an, of a nice home in the United States of America, in Washington State, to go to another kingdom, a kingdom of Hungary. Now, what is the prevailing rule for your life? What kingdom do you hail? You know, in the Lord's Prayer, you start out by reaching out and, and, and calling out to God, our Father in heaven. And then we say, hallowed be your name, and, and connect. And we understood that to be Christians bearing his name, to be holy as he is holy. To know his holiness by experiencing his holiness. To reflect his holiness by being transformed through repentance, redemption, and regeneration by grace through faith. By the baptism of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, let's recite this prayer together, understanding as the Spirit enables the words and preparing our hearts and minds to have the prayer answered in God's perfect will. Uh, we'll have the words on the screen. Jesus said to his disciples, pray in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, what does the second petition mean? Your kingdom come means rule us by your word and spirit in such a way that more and more we submit to you. Preserve your church and make it grow. Destroy the devil's work. Destroy every force which revolts against you and every conspiracy against your holy word. Do this until your kingdom fully comes when you will be all in all. Please let's turn to Luke 17, 20. You know, I went running a few times out there in uh, below zero conditions. I played Mission Impossible with, with other people in below zero conditions. And no matter what the temperature outside, my internal temperature remained about 98 degrees. About the same. About the same. Uh, in Frozen, there's this snowman. And I think, I haven't watched Frozen, but I think there's this fro snowman that dreams of being on a beach in the tropics. Okay, yeah, I'm getting some nods there. 
I'm just wondering, as long as that snowman exists, his internal temperature is, guess what? It's going to be frozen. It's going to be cold. His core temperature. You know, as Christians, you live in a kingdom that is contrary to God's. You live in an environment that is different temperature than who you are inside. You are aliens and strangers in this world, citizens of heaven, working as ambassadors to bring a message of reconciliation to the lost and dying world. How do you stay warm in a cold world? How do you stay holy in a cesspool of sin and filth? Do you just hold your breath waiting for God's kingdom come to, like you, like you asked in the prayer, you know? How long is that going to last? How does God's kingdom look like? And how will you know it when it comes? In uh, Luke 17, 20, it's a, it, it reads, Once having been asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, The kingdom of God does not come with your careful observation. Nor will people say, here it is, there it is, because the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to his disciples, the time is coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. Men will tell you, there he is, or here he is. Do not go running after them, for the Son of Man in his day will be like the lightning which flashes and the lights up the sky from one end to the other. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Just as, he was, as it was in the days of Noah, so it, will be day, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. People were eating, drinking, marrying, and given into marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just like this on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, no one who is on the roof of his house with his goods inside should go down to get them. Likewise, no one in the field should go back for anything. Remember Lot's wife? Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, on that night, two people will be in one bed. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken, the other left. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Where, Lord? They asked. He replied, where there is a dead body, there the vultures will gather. Please, let's turn to Ephesians 2, 1 through 10. You know, this world is dead. Ultimately, judgment will come. It came in the flood. It came with Sodom. There are these and many warnings or harbingers that God is serious about sin. You know, we were looking at uh, Zechariah this morning, or Zephaniah this morning in, uh, in, our, in our Sunday school. And it was the day of the Lord. I mean, it talked about bad stuff. Okay, imagine bad stuff. And it was there. Just like once when God shut the door of the ark, the rains came and the judgment then. Just like when the angels grabbed Lot and his family's hands and they took him out of the city, that's when the, 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 the sulfur stuff came down and burned the city up. When God takes his people out of this world, that's when the day of the Lord Bad stuff is going to happen. He, can, he knows those that are his. And he even knows if you're going to try to go back and get the stuff out of your house or out of the field or off the rooftop. And he can whisk you away when you're asleep. He can whisk you away while you're working. Or save you and save you from this earthly judgment and the certain final judgment. The vultures are gathering for the final day. Revelations does not paint a pretty picture of the day of the Lord for those that are living in this environment. But he gives a glorious future, a glorious future for those that are his. Ephesians uh, 2 1. It says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air. There's the word kingdom. We live in this kingdom. 
the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in our transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We see two distinct kingdoms in here. The kingdom of death and then the kingdom of life. We're made alive. Not only that, we are virtually brought in the presence of God. We're seated in the heavenlies. That's what it says here. Which is like, as good as alive, as good as in the, in the, in the presence of that kingdom. Jesus says the kingdom of God is within you. You know, you as a believer, let's, let's turn to 1 John 3, 3. You as a believer are a new creation by God's wonderful grace. You as a Christian have an armor or an ark to flee to from the effects and the ultimate death of this world. Inside the armor, the ark or the mountain, is a bubble. It's a bubble kingdom of holiness waiting for the eternal kingdom. You know, like Kent read earlier, it is like birth pangs. You know, as a Christian, you have a hope in. The kingdom is in you. It maintains a constant temperature even though the world is cold and ugly. Who hopes for what, for what he already has? You know, in this prayer, we ask for the kingdom to come. We, we, the prayer wasn't saying, oh God, thank you that I'm living in this wonderful kingdom. It basically is a petition. Let this kingdom come. I'm desiring this kingdom. You know, while you live in this hope, your life becomes governed not by this kingdom of this world, in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, it says, Examine yourselves to see whether you're in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? He's that kingdom. Unless, of course, you fail the test. You know, when we are saved, God seats us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. You know, one day, this kingdom within the believers will be realized as the only kingdom. It is still coming. In the Lord's Prayer, we're not thanking God for our present experience of His kingdom. We're petitioning God to have His kingdom come. We're yearning to be clothed with immortality. You know, the petition expresses our hope. Who hopes for what something that he already has? Expressing hope in prayer is all good. But expressing that hope inside is what counts. In 1 John 3, starting with verse 3, it says, Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are or who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. 
This is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. There's two kingdoms that battle for your soul. And in the kingdom, when we're placed in, in, at the throne of God and, and with Jesus inside of us, that kingdom within inside of us, that, that presence of Jesus, in that presence of Jesus, there's no sin there. You cannot sin as, a, as an outward work of Jesus Christ living in you. That's not Jesus' kingdom when you sin. Now we battle, okay? And Paul said, I have not attained it. But there's that battle. We, we want to serve Christ. And we petition, Lord God, let that kingdom come. Not only let that come in the future. We're not just holding our breath for the future. But we're also saying, let it come inside of me. Let me live that life that I so long to live. Lord, help me to put aside the deeds of sin. That other kingdom that causes death. I don't want to be part of the kingdom of death. But I'm so drawn to it. You have to lock it out of the ark in the baptism of repentance. Let it drown. Dying to sin is a daily action. Paul says, I die daily. Be baptized in the name of Jesus to be cleansed from the kingdom of death. Okay, so accepting Jesus Christ, washing away of your sins taking away all the past sins, and then be baptized with love, joy, patience, and the power of the Holy Spirit at work in you. You know, put on the armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the devil. And he's got all kinds of equipment, the sword, the, the belt, the, the feet shod with the preparation of peace, all kinds of stuff to hold on to, to hold your ground. Not only to hold your ground, but to slash through the enemy's ways. Turn away from sin, be cleansed from sin, and put on righteousness. Your petition for the kingdom to come in, in hope. You act out that hope as you put to death the ways of the kingdom of death and live as the heavenly realm dictates. The birthing pangs are tough to bear sometimes. But there's a joy. There's a joy that awaits when the kingdom comes. And I'm looking for that, that, that time when that, that baby is done being emerged and it, and it starts crying out and, and, and saying, Woohoo! I made it! I made it! I can, I'm not relying uh, in this bubble anymore. I'm out. And I'm in the kingdom. Breathing free. No more sin. No more kingdom of death. You know, we look for that. Come, Lord Jesus. Come. Let's pray. Lord God, we come to you today.